exciting project today. I'm going to be rehousing my Caribbean Versicolor and I'm working on that enclosure today. So let me explain to you what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. But first of all, I want to tell you about River's Wish Animal Sanctuary. I am from Spokane, Washington and River's Wish is the best animal sanctuary we have here that takes all kinds of animals. Their main focus was bunnies, but they also have birds, they have goats, they have pigs, they have sheep, they have dogs, horses. They are completely amazing. So if you ever want to donate to a really worthy cause, donate to River's Wish. It is run by a married couple and they both have worked full time you know, all of the time that they've had the sanctuary to keep it running. They, uh, one of them, she is a school teacher and the other was a professor at a local college. They have workshops there, they have special events, they have auctions, but really, um, they could use your help. They always need food for their horses, equipment, you know, they're, they're wonderful. So really, go and check out River's Wish. They have a website. Um, just look them up on Google. I will post it up here so you can see and yes, I they really have my heart So check them out. So what am I going to put my Versicolor in? I am going to put it in this crystal clear display case and uh, This is for obviously footballs cars is It has a top Comes off of course Here's the top, here's the case. The case will be setting up like this. I'm gonna to need to drill ventilation holes in, in my enclosure. And I'm gonna use this drill. Just a regular drill. This right here is a 760, uh, 7 drill bit made for metal, uh, for all kinds of material. It's a very <laughs> excellent drill bit. And I'm gonna leave uh, I'm going to leave a link to where you can buy this. This is at Lowe's. I'm going to show you exactly what it is in case you want to look for one yourself. I went to a template site. They have free templates. A lot of these templates are for you know schools, school children for teachers, and they're free. Uh, you could draw dots on here. I'm, I'm probably just going to put them on with tape on the side of my enclosure and you can get them in all kinds of shapes, but I found these spiders. I'm going to tape them on here like so and then I'm going to drill the holes I'm trying to get them evenly spaced. I mean, I'm, not, I'm, I'm really not that big of a perfectionist, so it's going to be okay with me. I'm going to use little pieces of this tape to secure that on. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut across the lid so that this lid can be opened and closed. And that's really important to me to be able to do that excited to not have to open the top of the container my Versicolor is in because it ruins the little ones webbing and I want I want them I want my Versicolor to feel secure and you know any arboreal tarantula like you know Versicolor New World this would be a great enclosure for them I'm going to use these hinges that I ordered from Josh's Frogs they're acrylic hinges, not metal. They're gonna look nice, and it has a latch as well. And I will be figuring out how to put those on, and I will use some kind of maybe, um, you know, super glue to do that. Then, also, from Josh's Frogs, I have this false bottom. It's five quarts. You put it in the very bottom of the enclosure as a drain and this is to help prevent mold and so that you can have a more bioactive setup and put plants in there. On top of that, 
false bottom, I'm going to use this BioDrain terrarium draining mesh. I'm going to cut a piece of this out and I'm going to put it over that false bottom medium. And on top of that, I'm going to put a mixture of cocoa fiber and a kind of potting soil that is organic and some sphagnum moss. I'm also going to affix this piece of cork bark inside. And I will most likely, you know, glue this above the substrate level so that it will decrease chances of getting moldy. I'm going to glue this also, this fake air plant, to the side of my cork bark. Let's get started. I wanted you to see what my Carabina Versicolor has been living in. This is something I got at a local Bed Bath & Beyond store. It was on sale for like $3.99. It's, it's a pet food dispenser. It worked out really well because I could open the little top, the flap here, and it's sealed with rubber. And I could look in and I could also do feedings and I could also use um, a syringe to put water in the water bowl but as you can see you know here is the webbing the little one is up here and growing and you know it, it's just not adequate at this stage I want something prettier and nicer for my tarantula I've got my spider templates here when I drill this I'm gonna leave the lid on because I don't want any pressure to crack the acrylic. So when I'm drilling, I'm just gonna start doing it. I mean, that's me. You could, you could measure everything if you wanted, whatever you wanna do. So I'm gonna place the drill here like this on top of my template and it's resting right on. Then I'm gonna very slowly start the drill. See that just went through like butter. I'm just going to go along and I'm going to space these out. In the shape of a spider. Sometimes you might get a little stuck. It's okay. about this is that it's not melting to the drill bit. I love it. And that's how it looks. I think it's amazing considering, you know, what, what I was using before. I don't think that you need to see all of this. So I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to show you what it looks like after I've drilled all the holes. Here is our spider. Now right through here, there was a little, it was a little too close and on the inside of the acrylic, there are some hairline cracks. And that is why I recommend going ahead and marking these holes a little farther apart than what I did. You know, the other great thing about this project is that you can take this idea that I have and you can make it your own. You can do all kinds of things. And you can do a much better job than I'm doing. And come up with something just gorgeous. And if you do, you know, I would love to hear about it. And I would love to hear about it in the comments. I would love to see an example. If you make a video, share it with me. I would love to see your designs. And this is just me doing something for the first time and sharing it with you. And I'm sure with time, you know, I'll probably get better at this as well. You know, it's pretty neat. And if you, if you take time and, and do it, you might have something perfect. For this job, you are also going to need a Dremel that has a cutting bit and something to sand. Also, a Dremel bit will work really well if you have a sander bit. And you're going to need eye protection. Casey, tarantulas is very good about reminding you that you need eye protection and that you know if you if you don't know how to use the tools you can get help otherwise you know practice on something 
give it a practice run. Uh, I have <laughs> made that mistake myself and especially if you're on a budget, you don't want to have to go back to the store and buy another enclosure or go through rehousing your tarantula only to have to do it again because you don't like the way your enclosure looks. Practice with some tools. Give yourself a few, you know, pieces of something to cut on. Just use maybe a, a water jug um, or even a plastic bottle. Uh, just be aware that it probably won't be as thick as the acrylic, but at least it gives you an idea of, of what it's like. And if you don't have the money to purchase tools, ask around. Maybe there's someone you can borrow them from. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the front door piece to my enclosure. I'm going to use my Dremel and I'm going to put on my eye protection. I'm going to take this top. I'm going to use the box that it came in to steady it. I'm sure you could use something else too, as you can hear here. This is not, uh, <laughs> maybe it's not always the most stable. Let's see. Now I will tell you, the pressure is on. I didn't, it's not that this is easy for me. I feel a lot of pressure to try and get these cuts straight and I doubt that they're going to be straight. Even though I have a line, I'm probably not going to get them completely straight. So you know what? That's all right. Now, if I turn it around this way, I might have some, you know, more plastic edges toward the front, but I can drill those down. And you can see here that maybe it's easier for me to cut it with the side that's pushed out instead of the indentation. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that. Yeah, Mike from Casey's, Casey Tarantulas has a very steady hand. here get it along here like this so the next thing I need to do is trim the corners on the bottom piece where the top part is going to open because otherwise it's going to bump up against this corner. I'm going to use one of the grinding tools instead of this cutter. And in, in case you wanted to see, this is what the cutter looks like. It has a flat head screw in this piece and you know you just put that through the hole that's in the middle of the blade and screw it in. So it's not hard. It's, it's really something we can all, most of us can do. So. When you change a bit out, you want to hold down the lock. And this stabilizes right here so that you can twist this and you want to twist it clockwise and it'll loosen it up. Then you can stick your bit in and tighten it back up without it moving around. Now this is a, a sanding, a sanding bit. I'm going to use it to drill down the corners. I'm going to break some of these chunks off. So what we got here is a notch. And this will be able to open. Now I'm going to smooth out 
these edges. Still gonna need a little bit of sanding. I'm gonna do that off camera. I am now going to take a look at how these hinges can be placed on here. Just for practice, just to see. And fortunately, that covers up a little bit of my mess. Isn't that nice? It's always good to test things out before hand. Let's test this and see how it opens. I'm going to go ahead and glue this part in. When I finish gluing all of that, I'm also going to go around it with some uh, silicone. This is Aquarium Safe and it's uh, clear. I'm using this E6000 glue and what I'm going to do is squeeze some out. <laughs> this stuff is uh, probably old. It still works though. And I'm going to put it all around the edges here. Okay, so I need to put this in so that it, it, the glue sticks. And I've heard some people say that the E600 6000 can get crispy and turn yellow and break off. So you might want to choose a different kind of glue. But for me, that's what I had, so that's what I'm doing. I got a little bit of glue on the front here, so I'm gonna have to clean that up later. It's better just not to get glue everywhere. Not like me, not like I did. Seal the inside. Now, we'll tell you, <laughs> this is pretty hard for me because I have some problems with my wrist. I know I'm supposed to have something to push on the inside of this, but it's not going to fit in here anyway, so maybe you guys know a better way to do it. If you do, tell me. Another way I'm sure you could do this is to push it out, put it on the Q-tip, and run it along the edge. I have a messy workstation here. So now that I have used, now that I've used the silicone around the bottom part, I'm finding that my, my lid or my opening needs to have more of a gap right here. So I'm going to take the grinder on my Dremel and I'm going to grind down more of a gap in between. Now that the enclosure has been cut and the hinges have been put on and the clasp has been put on and glued it's going to need to wait 24 hours before we can do the rest so i will make a part two for this video and i will show you what i do the next day after everything has cured and the enclosure is ready to go but in the meantime, let's take a look at what we have so far and just be aware that this, this hasn't been cleaned up yet. It has a lot of pieces of, of uh, acrylic in the bottom that will need to be washed out once the silicone has hardened. Here's a view of our spider ventilation. I think it turned out pretty well. This is the better side. The other side, there was a little bit of cracking, didn't go all the way through, just hairline cracks. So I consider that pretty lucky. Let's get in a little closer. Take a look at our ventilation. There's one vent on each side, and then there, there's no ventilation in the front. Oh, so you see the two hinges are placed at the very edges. I made sure that there was a gap and between the two where the door folds down at the bottom and also there needed to be a gap in the corners of the bottom piece so that the top door could swing forward and down. And then there's the clasp at the top 
and that was all placed very carefully. So if you kind of mock those up first and see where they go, then that'll really help you out. Here's another view of our enclosure. Just remember that I believe that you can make this into anything you want and I think that you can really impress yourself and probably do a much better job than I did. So just take what I had here and make it your own. I do have ventilation holes on the top. I also have ventilation holes down the back. And I'm, I'm tending to think that my Versicolor will hang out in the back a lot, so there's going to be ventilation there. And remember that this is cut up here to allow for some substrate. And we made it a little deeper because we're going to use some of the false bottom that, that helps uh, with mold and drainage. So that's going to be down here. And then there'll be the screen, this bio drain. And then we'll have a layer of our dirt. And um, I plan to, to add some plants later. There's going to be a piece of cork bark. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments and we will see what th happens in the next video with setting the rest of this up. Make sure to go and check out Casey Tarantulas. Check out his video, How I Make My Arboreal Enclosures, because I'm really piggybacking off of him for this idea. I'm sure he probably learned from someone else, but he's definitely the one I want to give a shout out to, let you know that that's where I got my information from.